What's good sports gamers? And with this video, I'm gonna be going over with you the controls you have at your disposal on defense, simple adjustments that can improve the on-ball defense immensely, and what you can take advantage of that the computer simply can't as an on-ball defender in NBA 2K24. I'm Chris from Sports Gamers Online, and all right, let's get it. To succeed as an on-ball defender, you need to take full advantage of angles, anticipation, and being aggressive at the right times and I'll go over it all shortly. But first, let's go over the controls and settings you're gonna wanna be familiar with if you haven't played in a while or are new to the 2K series. First, this is a big help as far as helping you navigate the pick and roll and is going into the pause menu and then to your game plan. Then go to your coach settings and scroll all the way down to team communication. This is where you wanna switch it to defense only. This lets you know when pick and rolls are coming before you're even visually aware of it by a little indicator popping up above your player's head of what coverage you're supposed to be playing. Again, it gives you an extra second to plan ahead what you're gonna be doing against screens, whether it's letting you stick closer to the ball handler or trying to cut them off. Now, as far as controls, to get it out of the way, the left stick is how you're gonna move your player around and track the ball handler. If you hold the right trigger while moving the left stick, your player will then sprint in whatever direction you're aiming. Now, if you hold the left trigger, your player will get into a defensive stance. So when you move the left stick around, you will see he's spread apart when he moves and he's always gonna be facing forward. Now, if you hold both the left trigger and right trigger while moving around with the left stick, your player will perform a fast shuffle. So when you move the left stick, he will continue to keep his head forward while moving faster laterally. Now there are pros and cons to each. Using just the left stick, yeah, you're able to move around, but if you notice the defender will turn his back when changing directions, you don't want that. And it's a lot harder to move side to side on a dime, which is why only using the left stick and turbo will be primarily used in chase down situations. And why it's also important to not start chasing the ball handler until they pass the three-point line or else this happens. Now, since just using the left stick can't be trusted fully, you're going to be relying on tracking the ball handler while in a defensive stance in most cases. Because it keeps you forward as long as you're holding the left trigger to defend shots. But it's a give and take, right? Moving around in your stance doesn't let you move side to side as fast as just the left stick and sprint. So that's where being in a defensive stance can hurt. If you're defending somebody in a full sprint and or you stay in your stance way after it was time to abandon ship and sprint chase is when you can get beat consistently for buckets, which luckily all you have to do is let go of the left trigger and now you can sprint as fast as you can. Now, how do you know when it's time to chase down the ball handler after losing contain? I mentioned this in a lot of my videos because it's helpful, but an easy way to know when your stance has failed you and they're about to beat you to the rim is if it looks like they're gonna beat you to the free throw line or the low block to the elbow. You wanna use this as your marker to tell if you're doing well or not. Because if they beat you here, your opponent can trigger animations and cause defenders to crash and create kickout opportunities. If you beat them to this spot or it's well guarded, you will create heavily contested shots or you ever notice your opponent will pump fake in this area? That means you basically canceled their animation because you beat them to the spot where they can trigger it. So in the half court, knowing the area where they need to beat you to can help you not react to every little dribble move they do even when they don't go anywhere because you know you had the free throw line locked down. While also giving you a clue when it's time to abandon ship out of your stance and try to sprint back up and cut them off as best as you can. Now you can combine knowing your spots on the floor with, since you're able to see what the ball handler sees, you can see if they have a clear lane or not, meaning nobody is at the rim, and almost predict their route and cheat over. If a guy's coming up the sidelines and you see the baseline is open, don't be afraid to cheat over a bit. Odds are he's gonna attack over there. You can look like the best defender ever just by noticing where the open lane is past you and cheating over. Now, when trying to create turnovers, there are two ways to grab steals as an on-ball defender. You can play the passing lane and you can pick their pocket clean. Playing the passing lane, you can use the square or X button or you can use the right stick to attempt to steal pass. So if you flick the right stick in the correct direction, so choosing the correct hand to attempt to steal with, you can come down with turnovers. 
Since the direction you point the right stick will be from the defender's perspective, remember the direction of pass thrown or ball dribbled, you will flick the right stick in the opposite direction. So if pass it to the right or dribble moves going to the right, you will want the defender's left hand to animate. So you flick the right stick to the left and vice versa. Now you can only do this if you're a good distance away from the ball handler. If you're too close, those steal attempts become on ball steal attempts. On ball, the same thing applies. You want to not get confused and pick the correct hand to attempt an on ball steal or else you will pick up reaching fouls very quickly. It's best to attempt after a dribble combo or when you've been dogging the ball handler the whole possession bumping them off course. Defending the drive then they happen to get an animation to trigger, you're better off jumping straight up in the air and causing an issue with their layup attempt instead of trying to go for the block and coming up with a foul. Now to jump straight up in the air during a drive you want to hit the triangle or Y button if you're on Xbox and flick the left stick straight up in the air. Again, the best part about this is you're less likely to foul, yet still contest their shot. Now, when defending guys who drive, ideally it's best for you if they drive in a straight line because you don't have much to worry about. But to break free, they're going to counter and attempt to go the other way or stop on a dime. And when that happens, more specifically when they go the other way, let go of your left stick because the game is going to make you slide out of the way as they attempt their move, especially for the spin move. And if you're still aiming left or right when the animation is happening, you're going to end up even further away from the target. Now, another benefit of having team communication on is when your opponent drives towards your off ball defender and they will usually automatically switch the assignment without you knowing. And then you end up leaving somebody wide open. So if you have team comms on, as soon as you see something pop above your defender's head, it's telling you they're switching the assignment and to take theirs and you can end up stopping some wide open jumpers. Now while holding both the left and right triggers, you can also attempt to cut off ball handlers by flicking the left stick in any direction and your player will take a quick lunge. So you're gonna wanna do this before they fully commit to the drive or they're about to pass you. Now the cut off step won't work if you're also holding the right stick up to contest the shot. Next I wanna suggest playing full court press and practicing chasing and changing directions against ball handlers and going over everything I'm about to go over. Because people hurry up and try and get to the paint as fast as they can when they see press, right? What better way to practice simulating defending in the half court? Playing on ball yard is gonna be a step behind and reacting, so you're gonna have to rely on what the court is looking like as far as space goes, what the opponent likes to do, and preventing that. And also being a menace going off script when you see the opportunity to do so. Because I mean, if you really think about it, your opponent has about four or five drives per possession if you deny the first, second, or third. So just playing within these principles can lead you to a lot of success stopping them. So with that, I hope this video was able to help you guys out. And if you like the content we provide, make sure to subscribe to Sports Gamers Online for more NBA 2K24 content. So make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And once you're with us, hit that bell icon at the bottom so you don't miss anything we put out. All right, people, I'm Chris. Thank you all for watching, and be good, y'all.